Good morning, boys and girls. How are you today? Uh, so the first story I'm going to read today is called The Big Orange Splot, and it's by Daniel Manis Pinkwater. Mr. Plumbean lived on a street where all the houses were the same. See, they're all the same. He liked it that way. So did everybody else on Mr. Plumbean Street. This is a neat street, they would say. And then, one day, a seagull flew over Mr. Plumbean's house. He was carrying a can of bright orange paint. No one knows why. And he dropped the can, and no one knows that, well, why about that either, right over Mr. Plumbean's house. It made a big orange splot on Mr. Plumbean's house. Oh, too bad, everybody said. Mr. Plumbean will have to paint his house again. I suppose I will, said Mr. Plumbean. But he didn't paint the house right away. He looked at the big orange splot for a long time, and then he went about his business. The neighbors got tired of seeing that big orange splot. Someone said, Mr. Plumbean, we wish you'd get around to painting your house. Okay, said Mr. Plumbean. He got some blue paint and some white paint, and that night he got busy. He painted at night because it was cooler. When the paint was gone, the roof was blue, the walls were white, and the big orange splot was still there. Then he got some more paint. He got red paint, yellow paint, green paint, and purple paint. In the morning, the other people on the street came out of their houses. Their houses were all the same. But Mr. Plumbean's house was like a rainbow. It was like a jungle. It was like an explosion. Look at that. There were big orange, there was the big orange splot, and there were little orange splots. There were stripes. There were pictures of elephants and lions and pretty girls and steam shovels. The people said, Plumbean has popped his cork, flipped his wig, blown his stack, and, and dropped his stopper. They went away muttering. That day, Mr. Plumbean bought carpenter's tools. That night, he built a tower on top of his roof, and he painted a clock on the tower. The next day, the people said, Plumbean has gushed his mush, lost his marbles, slipped his hauser, they decided they would pretend not to notice. That very night, Mr. Plumbean got a truck full of green things. He planted palm trees, baobabs, thorn bushes, onions, and frangipani. In the morning, he bought a hammock and an alligator. When the other people came out of their houses, they saw Mr. Plumbean swinging in a hammock between two palm trees. They saw an alligator lying in the grass. Mr. Plumbean was drinking lemonade. Plumbean has gone too far. This used to be a neat street. Plumbean, what have you done to your house? The people shouted. My house is me and I am it. My house is where I like to be and it looks like all my dreams, Mr. Plumbean said. The people went away. They asked the man who lived next door to Mr. Plumbean to go and have a talk with him. Tell him that we all liked it here before he changed his house. Tell him that his house has to be the same as ours so we can have a neat street. The man went to see Mr. Plumbean that evening. They sat under the palm trees, drinking lemonade and talking all night long. Early the next morning, the man went out to get lumber and rope and nails and paint. When the people came out of their houses, they saw a red and yellow ship next door to the house of Mr. Plumbean. What have you done to your house? They shouted at the man. My house is me and I am it. My house is where I like to be, and it looks like all my dreams, said the man who had always loved ships. He's just like Plumbean, the people said. He's got bees in his bonnet, bats in his belfry, and knots in his noodle. Then, one by one, they went to see Mr. Plumbean late at night. They would sit under the palm trees and drink lemonade and talk about their dreams. And whenever anybody visited Mr. Plumbean's house, the very next day, that person would set about changing his own house to fit his dreams. Look at that. We have a hot air balloon, a house that looks like the Taj Mahal from India, a castle, and a house that looks like the Parthenon from Greece. Look at the street now. Whenever a stranger came to the street of Mr. Plumbean and his neighbors, the stranger would say, this is not a neat street. 
Then all the people would say, our street is us and we are it. Our street is where we like to be and it looks like all our dreams. The end. Love that story. Everybody gets to have a house that they like. And now this one. This is called Scribble Stones and it's written and illustrated by Diane Alber. This story is about one happy stone who was gray and round and rarely alone. He lived with the others all stacked in a pile and waited calmly with a large, friendly smile. Each stone had a purpose, but it wasn't known yet. Some would be landscaping and some a stone pet. There were so many things that the stones could be, the hardest part was waiting to see. Stone knew that his purpose would brighten someone's day. He just wasn't sure how or in what kind of way. He imagined the things that he might soon become as he watched all the stones get picked one by one. Piles getting smaller and smaller. But his happy face slowly turned to a frown as he watched the tall pile start to dwindle on down. And although he was worried, he tried not to care until it was clear he was the last one there. Then it finally happened. Stone was quickly picked up. He was placed on a desk next to a very large cup. As Stone looked around, he thought, this is so great. But he soon discovered he was a dull paperweight. I'm supposed to bring happiness, not hold paper still. There must be a mistake. This just can't be my skill. Then all of a sudden, a splatter flew high, and then some bright scribbles came wiggling by. They were headed right toward the short paper stack and they filled up the paper on the front and the back. They were all making art. It was happening so fast. Stone feared that the paper simply would not last. He couldn't believe just how much the pile grew. And then he heard a small cry from the fun splatter crew. We knew that this pile was getting too tall. There's no more paper. We have used it all. The scribbles all cried. They now saw it too. Oh, this is a disaster. Oh, what will we do? Stone didn't want the scribbles to cry, so he thought of something that they all could try. He slowly rolled down the very large pile and said, I know how to make you all smile. I know I'm not paper, but I like art too. Do you think you could spare some red, yellow, and blue? They loved the idea and could not wait to start. Scribble began making a happiness heart. Splatter then painted some pale baby blue. Another scribble added a sunny gold hue. It didn't take long before more stones showed up and soon the line grew behind a very large red cup. To Stone's surprise, he was picked up once more. He had never heard of this happening before. More art was added and he was on his way to become a small gift to brighten someone's day. Nearby, another stone's journey had begun he was spreading such happiness and having such great fun. Every time he traveled, someone added their part. Sometimes just a scribble, sometimes fancy art. The stones traveling. With each new layer, there was a story to share and soon scribble stones were seen everywhere. They traveled the planet. It was quite an event, bringing happiness and fun wherever they went. Now thousands of stones inspire creativity each day all because of a paperweight with a will and a way. Scribbled stones are intended to sp inspire creativity. Here's how it works. Find a stone and add some art, a scribble, a splatter, or a happiness heart. Then give it away and let someone know that this scribble stone makes happiness grow. It's so very simple and easy to do. Just add some more art and give it away too. Make the art, give it away, make the art, give it away, make the art, give it away. That's fun. That's really something fun to do. The end. Well, that's our two stories for today, girls and boys. I'll see you again next time.